Hey everyone, welcome back. It's me, Only Run Very New, bringing you more Bravo gameplay. Uh, today we we're playing against Briar. Definitely a difficult one. Not 100% sure what I'm trying to do in the matchup. Um, this game I am trying to go more aggressive. No sigils and also no arcane barrier. Um, someone pointed out to me that when I play against Briar, I just never use my Arcane Barrier. So I'm just giving it up and seeing how it goes. Let me turn off these sound effects. Uh, we go first and we immediately get to dominate a Starstruck, which feels quite nice. Um, that's probably one of the ways we can try to win the game, is by stealing it with a super lucky turn zero like this, with like a spinal or a starstruck, which will either get armor or basically get their entire turn. They could have a channel, uh, Mount Heroic, which will let them do something they wanted to do anyway under starstruck, but oftentimes they'll just like activate grass to make a rune chant. Especially if they see us on no arcane barrier, they're probably going to be trying to make rune chance when it's not incredibly detrimental to them. But we don't really mind because them paying two resources to make a rune chance fairly inefficient. Although if they get to pitch a blue, they still get to like attack with thorn or something, and it's kind of free. Um Two blues, red choke slam, and a starstruck. It's kind of interesting. Um, we could just throw a starstruck, sort of try to force blocks. Um, they don't have an embodiment, which is nice, so it might be actually quite tough for them to stop the starstruck. We could dominate a choke slam and arsenal the starstruck. Don't really love dominating the choke slam over making a surge though, so we could just make a surge and throw the choke slam. Because if the choke slam is going to be good, they'll probably just give us armor on the dominated choke slam, and then our starstruck and arsenal is a lot harder to cast. I actually don't know what I should be doing here. I think just throwing the starstruck, using an opportunity where they don't have an embodiment, is solid though. Um, if we had an embodiment, it'd be quite easy to just throw the Starstruck and Arsenal the Choke Slam, waiting for like a channel Mount Heroic turn. But yeah, as we as we see here, we we just throw the Starstruck. I would probably do that again in the future. Um, just trying to leak some damage, get a bunch of cards, and take advantage of him not having an embodiment. It's kind of a weird spot that's not like simple though. He only blocks six. So definitely expecting like an E-strike here. He could also just like rabble a couple times. Mm. Yeah, an E-strike with a rune chant. Can't do anything about the rune chants. Those go. So with no arcane barrier, we just kind of have to go fast. We can't we can't slow the game down because we're just going to lose the thorn eventually. Here I think I just block with the command and conquer and look to make a surge and throw the spinal crush. Um, the command and conquer in arsenal I don't think is worth more than three life because he still has crown up. So I think we want to get crown out of the way before we start valuing the command and conquers very highly. We can't block Arcane, so we should probably look to block damage where we can without sacrificing too much. Um, Pummel is in the deck, though, so perhaps there's an argument to be made to have Command and Conquer and Arsenal so that there's a good attack to Pummel. Um, again, though, if they have Crown of Providence, it's not, like, great. Once we get to our action phase, generally Bravo turns are fairly easy. Um, the hard decisions are usually made during the blocking step. So here we just uh, make a surge and throw spinal. 
Not really expecting it to do too much other than get a couple cards and get a couple damage. Yep, he blocks with two cards and takes two damage. Uh, red Joke Slam and three blues with a surge up. Kind of looking to just block six and throw the Choke Slam. Again, I think the three life that we get from blocking is going to be better than uh, dominating it, even though we would get to make a surge. I like to not stop the on hit here because I think he's going to attack me again and get the embodiment anyway. So I'd rather save the armor for an on hit I want to stop. And yeah, we don't have to protect our arsenal because we don't have one, so we just end up blocking three and looking to choke slam him. I feel like choke slam can be pretty good against Briar, but sometimes it just doesn't do anything. Uh, they do have a few pump spells. They have Bramble Spark and sometimes Nimbleism, although these days you do see Nimbleism maybe a little less than before. It used to be pretty staple, but I think um, they're trying to play around Warmonger's Diplomacy a lot these days. So I think you see a lot more like Lightning Surge and Entwine Lightning than you did in the past. He gives us all of his armor. Um, this must be in channel, a channel turn. Definitely interesting that he gave us a bunch of armor here. But it's not even a channel turn, it's just a snatch with force of nature. He showed us so tomorrow. So he has a blue so tomorrow in hand and a card we don't know. We just go ahead and block five. We think he's gonna snap here. But he shows us a razor reflex, which is definitely a very interesting one. I do not see that often. But it is good for him here. He gets to draw two cards, which is certainly scary. We wanted to hold these three cards to be able to spinal crush him back. Um, but him turning that Razor Reflex into three damage and two cards was pretty dang good. He must have drawn some real bad ones because he just makes a... He activates Grasp to make a... Um, Rune chant and then just attacks with Thorn. I think that's damage we're happy to just take here. We can still send the Spinal back. Oh, my cat's over there playing with some paper. We won't stop him, he's cute. <laughs> um. Yeah, so we just Spinal. He ends up blocking for four with a Pulse and the rest of his armor. Uh, certainly very costly for him, but he must have a big hand. Uh, he has no armor and we have a bunch of armor, which is something interesting here. Here, we are just looking to block with our Sink Below at some point and throw Crippling Crush back, especially because he plays Channel. Um... This is kind of an interesting spot. So he attacks for seven go again. I think preventing the embodiment is pretty good here. Because we have the sink below, we could block with tech plating and boots and sink below and prevent the embodiment. He could have another attack he wants to throw behind. The, the only one that would be really, really bad for us is if it's snatch. Because all the other attacks leave him without an arsenal, and I think he wants to have a big five card hand with a uh, channel Mount Heroic. So, do we play around Snatch here?
it seems like it's going to be a pretty close game. We're at close life. We don't have arcane barrier to like play a, to like slow down and maybe hope that he gets a turn that's kind of a brick. So I think I am going to just block this scar. And I think that that's a decision I would make moving forward too. So just block the scar. And if they have snatch then that sucks really bad for us, but it sort of is what it is. Um, if they don't have Snatch, preventing this embodiment is good. Because um, if we just let this 7 hit, and then he goes Arsenal Pass, he has an embodiment, and we didn't really get to use our Sync Below that well here. Maybe having Sync Below and Arsenal during his channel mount turn is like reasonable though. I don't know, it's kind of interesting. Let me know what you think down in comments. I think this is kind of a difficult spot. He ends up not having the snatch, but he does just throw the seven at us because he wants the embodiment. He sees us block with armor, so he probably knows we wants to keep our three cards. Um, but with him having no armor, the only thing we're really afraid of here is Anthem of Spring. If he has Anthem of Spring to be able to two card block eight, that's quite bad for us. But outside of Anthem of Spring, I'm not too scared of much. I mean, maybe like double sink. Um, but almost no matter what, he's got to give us two cards, even in the best case scenario. And a two card channel Mount Heroic turn, while scary, isn't like the most scary thing in the world. Looks like he doesn't have an Anthem, so he's going to end up giving us three cards, which is very good. Very, very good for us. We are at a lower life total though, so that kind of isn't great. And he could still end up throwing 7 here. Lucky he drew the snatch this turn and didn't have it as his last card last turn. But I do want to prevent this snatch trigger while still pummeling him for 10 with the hammer. Let me just pause and talk about this decision a little. Maybe I'm supposed to just block 7 with like Macho Grande and Sink, Hammer for 4, and then Arsenal to Pummel. Saving all my armor. And just sort of giving him a 4 card hand. Um, and being up 1 life. There's a chance we're going to want to proc our crown at some point. To fix like a terrible hand. Yeah, maybe I am actually supposed to slow it down a little here and just block 7, Arsenal the Pummel, and Hammer for 4. Yeah, I think this might have been a mistake. I don't know though, it's close. It seems close. Because just hitting him for 10, putting him down to 9, staying at 16, I guess we stay at 16 no matter what. But putting him down to 9 and having a 4 card hand maybe allows us to kind of like get him closer to that critical life point to where he has to start blocking and not utilizing his cards well. And then we even have a pummel in Arsenal in case we draw an attack we can pummel because obviously pummeling an attack is worth way more than pummeling a hammer. Maybe that's what I'm thinking about here. Maybe I just do six and arsenal the pummel. Yeah, I'm probably looking for pummelable targets. And I see red choke slams and two command and conquers in my graveyard, which are basically the two pummelable targets. So I just sort of pummel to try to get the value. Play Sigil of Suffering, which not good for us if we're on AB0. I don't see Sigil as often as I see Sync. He plays a red Sift. This might be a huge break for us. One of his cards... Almost didn't do anything? Maybe it's just like half of a lightning token? Yeah, and then he's playing Nimbleism to make a lightning token. And just passing. This is a huge break. This is like a game losing hand from our opponent. Um, we're just gonna, unfortunately we don't have anything better to do. We just have to pummel a hammer and arsenal of Warmarker's Diplomacy. 
hoping to maybe have a turn that we want to block out and then just play the warmongers and impact his turn. Um, he's getting at the life total though where he can't just take 10 here. Yeah, that last turn was a huge break. I think we were probably losing this game if he had anything reasonable there. I wonder what his last card in Arsenal is. Maybe like another Sigil of Suffering, but I have a feeling he would have just used that on the Pummeled Hammer last turn. Maybe not though, because he need because he knows he needs he's not going to do anything and he needs to protect himself from a crush effect this turn that could have been coming because he knew he was going to keep me with a four card hand having no attacks. We got kind of a free turn this turn, and that's uh, that's one way to beat Briar. <laughs> Start off with a dominated Starstruck, and then have him give you a free turn. Takes a while on his decision here. Then he plays a Sigil from hand, going down to seven. So what's an arsenal that he didn't play? Maybe it's like another channel? Because he didn't have a blue earth card. He plays out this round's on me against us. Um, he can't... I don't think he wants another lightning because he already has one. Maybe he just really needs to draw an attack. We don't really draw a threat here, which is a little bit of a bummer. I see an exude confidence. We're just going to block with an attack that lets us use our sink below. For whatever the follow up may be. And if he pitches like a card to pump it plus two, we even get to sink below that. And he Razor Reflexes, which uh, gives us full value on the Sync Blow, which is quite nice. I do um, Sync one of the blues, because I think any red is better for us here. Um, and any blue would still allow us to like play the Thunderquake out if we wanted to. And with the Terra Sunder, I want to keep all three cards. Um, he doesn't have an Embodiment. So here we just tear asunder. Not an awful draw. It is only coming in for six though because of the this round's on me. So if his arsenal card is that sigil of suffering that we were thinking it might be, he gets to get out of this quite easily. If not though, I think we're actually in a pretty good spot. He only blocks for two, and it is not the Sigil and Arsenal. So we're really wondering what it could be. Maybe it's Channel Mount Heroic. He's only going to have a one card hand, which is quite nice for us. Uh, we have this Warmonger's Diplomacy in Arsenal, which is not so good for us. Um, but we're going to do what we can do. Here, I think I'm just going to block four to prevent embodiment and then throw Cranial Crush, hopefully punishing a handful of two blocks. Yep, that's what I like to do. But I think from this spot and these life totals, we're just in a very good spot here. Um, if his arsenal is channel, he's not really going to have a t time to play it. He's at two low of life. It doesn't matter what attack we draw, we get to disrupt his channel turn. Um, we're always looking out for a third sigil, but if he drew a handful of two blocks, he kind of has to give us three cards to just not die, and he might even be inclined to give us four cards. Oh, 
So he has two three blocks. See if he wants to go down to one. If he goes down to one with no armor, yeah, I was going to say that allows us to block with three cards and hammer for four for the rest of the game. He only has one card. It's a Swarming Gloomvale. I want to talk about this decision a little. So I've, since I started making these YouTube videos, one thing I noticed is that I have trouble closing out games. A lot of times I'll, I won't see lines that just win the game. Um, I just kind of look for value. So I feel like two weeks ago I would have just blocked with Command and Conquer to make a surge and Spinal Crush him. But we know his arsenal isn't a defense react or he would have stopped the Terra Sunder for sure. So we can just take this three and dominate Spinal Crush and really end the game, unless this is a react. But like I said, like even sort of base level deductive reasoning skills would tell anybody that this is not a react. If it was a react, he would have used it on the Terra Sunder and probably gotten a lot closer to winning this game. So we just go down to seven and dominate Spinal. Um, even Anthem of Spring, you know, doesn't help him. He doesn't get to block with two cards. And this should end up just being the game here. Yep, that is the game. So this one was... A lot of things went well for us, and we still only won at seven life. Um... He did get to Razor Reflex us to go plus three and then draw two cards, which is good for him. But luckily for us, his two cards didn't seem that good. All he did was make a make a rune chant and attack us for five. We got to dominate a Starstruck on turn one, which basically just time walked him. He got to just make a rune chant and pass. And in the mid game, he had a turn where he didn't do anything against us. Now, we didn't have a hand that could really punish him, but we had a hand that could do stuff. Like, we still attacked for 10, which is quite a lot of damage to take zero to do. I still think this is a very hard matchup. I think Briar's favored by quite a bit. Um, so hopefully that was a fun one. Hopefully we learned a little bit. Comment, like, subscribe down below. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow where I'll have another game to show you. Thanks.